Tell us two lies and one truth. I took fencing lessons in order to learn how to sword fight before I did Batman book. I almost got pulled over from the cops, but I was able to outrun him. One time I was on a cruise and I fell off the boat. Ooh, they were really good. I I'm going to go with the fencing one. I'm going to say that's the truth. Going on the cruise, I think he fell over. I have to be logical about this. Very feasible. But falling off the boat is... I'm sure this idiot can get drunk and fall over things sometimes. <laughs> Welcome to Backspace Nerds. We have an extremely great show today. Uh, we're honored. It's our pleasure as Backspace Nerds family to welcome another person into the family, and that's Sean Murphy. Breaking news. The Backspace Nerds family has just informed our news station that Sean Gordon Murphy's camera is out. But we'll be reconnecting later in the episode. What will the Backspace Nerds family do? Improvise. Back to you, Jim. Super thrilled. I mean, we are nobody and we have you on the show. Like just the fact that you said yes, really awesome. So we well, really I, appreciate that. I owe Bobby a favor. He has compromising photos of me in a hotel room. Oh, so. boom. Yeah. More than likely, Sean and Sandy would, would probably be fighting quite a bit. <laughs> Man, Anthony and Sandy. Sean's not going to fight with Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Sandy My fight a lot. So that's Sandy. I'm Anthony. You know Bobby already. We're Backspace nerds. This is like the first time we've done any of this. So we don't know anything. <laughs> right, yeah. It's all like um, new to us. Probably going to hear weird questions that have nothing to do with, you know, normal questions you get every day. Just to make an icebreaker, Bobby thought that you were living in Portland, Oregon. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. We had to like have a whole meeting like five minutes before here and say, you know, he's in Portland, Maine, right? <laughs> John, I remember Portland. I, I, I remember right. Portland. Yeah. I just forgot the Maine part. Like, so, That's all right. <laughs> yeah. That's where most comic artists seem to live anyway. There's a big did, uh, bunch of I image. Say that? Yeah, a bunch of image guys live out there. Oh, what? I told him, I told him this, Sean. I actually DM Sean and said, is there a time difference? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I think it's the same time East Coast. And I, I felt like the idiot because I sent out the invite specifying <laughs> 10 a.m. Oh, no, you're good. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, backspace nerds, like each of us is a type of nerd. Bobby, you know, we call him the guru nerd. For Sandy, she's the least nerd nerd. <laughs> For myself, I'm really 100% nostalgia. So um, I guess my first question is, what type of nerd are you? <laughs> uh, I'm a car nerd. Oh, okay, great. Oh, a uh, gearhead. I definitely uh, look at a lot of car porn, so to speak. <laughs> Um, whenever I draw Batman, it's probably been the most fun part is just drawing the Batmobiles. And uh, the book I did, White Knight, was basically an excuse to have Batman hand out all of his Batmobiles to everybody. So you could see like the 89 Batmobile driving alongside the Adam West, driving alongside the Tumblr or whatever. So yeah, outside of that, I, I am a Trekkie in some ways. I'm a big Next Generation fan and uh, Batman, the animated series. Outside of that, though, I have a hard time following some nerd things like, you know, Pokemon, for example. Like, I don't know a lot about Pokemon. We don't know too much about the whole Pokemon <laughs> thing either. That's not... <laughs> no, no idea. We were just going to, like, know, break we... open this. Yeah, not... <laughs> yeah. Do you still go out and co collect them? Do you still play Pokemon Go? No, I, I don't play it, though. I don't play the game. They don't play the games, but they definitely break open the cards. So if you're comfortable, maybe in a little bit, we're going to break open some Pokemon cards and kind of walk through a little bit of it. That's fine. Yeah, let's do it. Sandy, what time zone are you in? Are you Australian? I am, yes. Okay. I am actually in New York. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so that's how I met Bobby and Anthony. This, this whole thing is kind of amazing for me because I don't know much about comics. And I feel like right now, speaking with you, it's like me discussing discovering chocolate for the first time and won the golden ticket at the same time. <laughs> oh, wow, thank I'm you. Not worthy. I'm not worthy in this conversation. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! I'm happy to be your chocolate. <laughs> Wow. That's I know, right? <laughs> that's, that's, the line. that's the line of the episode right there. I I'm took a first. chance right there. I, I wasn't sure how it would go over, but Australians are pretty uh, malleable, you, you know, joking around. So this is why we fight all the time. She has a different type of humor that I, gets me like really upset. And then she's like, oh, I'm just messing with you, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Easy. Yeah. It's very easy with you. You know, it's crazy. Like, I traveled a lot and you go to any country, there's always some Australian person, totally relaxed, <laughs> one with the culture. I, every time I travel, I see some 
some Australian guy that's basically doing the same thing. And I, it's, I don't know what it is about the culture that makes them so easy to get along with. There's not much to do back home. A couple of uh, conventions down there. There's one in Australia and there's one in New Zealand. And uh, friends of mine go, usually they kind of hit both at the same time. So you do like a tour, but I've not been able to do that yet. No, I'd love to. The Australian version of Comic-Con. This one time I saw a bunch of people fake fighting in the Melbourne Botanical Garden. I'm thinking, <laughs> what's going on? I had no idea it was... It was the uh, Australian equivalent of Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and even after seeing that, you decided to uh, start a podcast with, with these two guys, huh? <laughs> I know, right? It's awesome. Like, being a nerd is cool now. Like, it wasn't cool in the 80s. Uh, you, you were, you're like, I hid the comics that I was reading because I didn't want anybody to know. It was like embarrassing or whatever. But now, like, I have friends who are, right, are drawing from Marvel Comics and they're single and they get laid because they're comic book artists. Like, <laughs> I, I, I remember when, like, X Men was a huge thing when it was, they were rumored to make the movie. Movies. like nobody wanted to like do it nobody wanted to like make these films and then all of a sudden just became like a cash yeah. cow you know like it was yeah. amazing yeah um, i think x-men was the one that like blew the lid open i mean batman 89 was a hit oh. then you had a bunch of flops like the shadow and um yeah. like the phantom and yeah. ninja turtle movies weren't doing so well after a while so they were sort of hesitant about spending all this money on special effects and then i think when x-men with hugh jackman came out to me that was sort of the, the beginning of all of this that yeah. was 20 years ago now I think out of everything that you've created, I think my personal favorite is Punk Rock Jesus, right? And it just has a lot of attention, but it really needs to be pushed a little bit further, maybe into the to the media zone. Plot holes, right? And I know that's the, your most recent, am I correct? Or... Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you have you have a buddy named Chris, right? I think he's from New York. Yeah, Fa Fakiri. I can never pronounce it right. Something like that, right? So he mentioned yeah. he mentioned that he plays handball, right? Yeah, he's <laughs> big into it, man. I myself was a, a huge handball player. Right? Are we talking about like professional handball with the gloves? Or are we talking about like old school handball with just bare hands? There's a professional league for handball. <laughs> there is. There Only is in New York, I think. I mean, does it go outside of that? <laughs> United States Handball Association. United States Handball Association. Okay, Bobby. Bobby. Wow. Stand, stand that corrected. Was, <laughs> that was Bobby's really nerd moment. <laughs> I have something to show you, Sean, because I know you're into cars, right? My dad in Australia bought this car and kind of pulled it apart and did a whole like a renovation but for cars what's it <laughs> it's a 4 gt351 that's me in it i don't know if you can oh see. that's the one to have they only sold those in australia that's the mad yeah. max car drove all the way from melbourne to adelaide that right. that is the one that's like the mustang down there that's the one the aussies all have to have you see that that or like a malu or a holden <laughs> or something i'm jealous of your dad if i ever go down to australia if i could just drive in that car that'd be great yeah, absolutely <laughs> you are you big watcher of the jay leno's garage yeah. it's funny one thing that I had my eye on this car that was kind of an underappreciated Italian car from the 70s called a Pantera. And when Jay Leno covered it, the price of this car went from like 50 grand to 150 grand. I got priced out. It kind of pissed wow. me off. So I, I respect what Jay does. But every time he focuses on a new car, he like bumps the market on whatever that car is, you know. So <laughs> Jay Leno sort of fucked up that market for me. Like um, Elon Musk on Dogecoin right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> is Doge up or down right now? I can't. <laughs> like I'm just getting into this and you'll be proud i've never purchased a comic book in my whole entire life but i bought two Ooh, oh, thank you. my question is thank I'm you just, for reading them thanks for checking them out i appreciate that i'm just getting into this if you could recommend one comic book for me to read right now what would it be i oh, hope to god he doesn't like, pick me for this stuff what kind of genres are you into i like crime like psychological thriller kind of don't yeah. pick <laughs> me you would have been into this company called vertigo that isn't around anymore unfortunately um bobby what, what, what do you think for crime what can we recommend for her no bobby what do you think for crime what's that one that uh, sean phillips is doing with Bruder baker think think uh, think think, think. Um, kill or be killed yeah kill the yeah nailed it yeah, that's a good one. If you read Killer, be killed. Black and red cover. Be killed. Okay. What yeah, it's actually those are the comics I like to recommend the most. Is you don't have to, you don't get overwhelmed by like seventy years of Batman's history. You know, is, is there some like is there a book that you're reading right now, Sean, or something particular? Not a comic. I'm reading um a, a book about the guy that uh, captured Pablo Escobar. They did uh, Narcos based yeah, off of yeah, him. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to diving into that. I think you like <laughs> badass things. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole like psychological analyzing and trying to predict behavior with criminals. I think is pretty interesting. I feel like you and I can be best friends, Sean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, seriously, that's like all the stuff I'm into. What's your perfect Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> um, long walks on the beach. Uh, I don't, know. <laughs> don't, give, don't give me that like little bio about me. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, be sitting and smoking a cigar and drinking scotch on a sunny day. And in Maine, we don't get a lot of really warm sunny days. So when we do get good weather here, we 
take full advantage, you know, but uh, I just love being with friends and having like real talk, you know, like I think Bobby knows that about me. Like I, I don't like it when comics people try to, they, they think they're better than you or I don't know what it is, but I just really like to get down and talk to people. If you're not a comic creator, what do you think you would be doing instead? I think I'd be a writer, try to do novels and stuff like that. Like I think that creating is the fun part for me. Uh, I, I joke around if I ever like lose my hands and the ability to draw my backup career will be i'll just try to be a writer you know what about you guys do you guys have a plan a plan b you know what sandy wants to find the huge opportunity to to make it big with like digital assets you must have been following the uh, nft funny like our last episode was me breaking open the top shot <laughs> be a nft with bobby and Ed. <laughs> i haven't purchased any nft art only the basketball moments <laughs> what, yeah, what do yeah. you think about nft art theory I, I would love it if the idea is that i can sell a digital one-off of my art to bobby Bobby pays me a thousand bucks for it, for example. And then every time Bobby sells it, I get a cut. So okay. as it's traded, I can get a percentage means I don't have to die poor. So as a freelancer, I do think that, that would be really neat. I like the idea. I'd like it to work. I don't completely agree with everything going digital, but at the same yeah. time, I don't want to miss this feel like it's discovering the internet for the first time. How am I going to get a digital moment of a guy dunking a basketball when I can go on YouTube and watch that for free? And then Bobby was like, well, I'm a tangible guy. I, I need my card. The NFT people can argue that a, a baseball card is really a picture that they can look on the internet. I get the potential of NFTs. There's something there. Yeah. I have to touch it. I, I, I just touch it. I, I, I just, I want to see the create. <laughs> I'd like to think that there are there's always going to be a demand for like old school vintage one of a kind you know done by a human being it's like you know digital comics or digital books like people complain oh man how could you uh go digital i love the smell of paper and the old libraries and blah 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 kids who grow up now were born five years ago like they don't fucking care what paper smells like you know <laughs> so anthony and i were just mentioning that li like they should literally ball up odor of comics put it into yeah. a bottle and call it nostalgia <laughs> yeah i was showing him like the first comics that i got and then he was just just saying smell it smell it i'm like i'm not gonna smell my comic books <laughs> so i was like snooping a little bit sean and i saw on your youtube you were doing fine lines really therapeutic for the first five minutes and then i just <laughs> i just wanted you to, to complete the the, the piece <laughs> sorry it took so long <laughs> Like, do you yeah. get excited when you start and then get really annoyed at the end or are you just the same? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I enjoy the process. It's really satisfying. I look at art and I think of it as math, where it really is a bunch of numbers in a way. And you sort of want the equation to add up at the end of the day. Frustrating when you spend all this time doing it and then you got something you weren't expecting in a, in a bad way. You know, I love watching Bob Ross paint, um, and watching oh, artists it. do their craft. Like, there's just something mesmerizing about that. So I, I totally feel you. Yeah, I wanted to get a Bob Ross NECA tool. Boy, still deciding yeah. whether I now want to get it. Yeah. Bob Ross is the man. I know people like to dump on Bob Ross because he's not a real artist or whatever, but I, I disagree. He was doing a painting once and he stops and he's like, I paint these trees really quickly because we only have a half hour. Like I know how to paint trees for real. Like I know how to paint a tree. It could take me three days to paint a tree. Like I did that, but I found spiritual fulfillment out of teaching people that art is for everybody. His showmanship and his voice that really is the art with him. It's really not his painting. Happy, like trees, man. Happy, Happy trees, man. Happy <laughs> yeah. trees. Happy trees. So, so Sean, so my, my cheap ass is, is <laughs> my, oh, cheap ass, time? Yeah, right. my cheap ass is running on, on 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 a two minute thing so you mind if we jump out and then jump back <laughs> Let's do it. Sure. I can use my phone and I can get some video. The sound right. isn't going to be as good, but yeah, I can definitely switch to the phone. All so right, yeah, give, sweet, me, give me a sweet. second. Ready? Bet. Three, I guarantee you he'll pick Pokemon. What do you think? I think he's going to pick hockey. I think, I feel like he's a hockey guy. What do you think, Anthony? Like, you know, I think he might be like, hey, you know, we're here. Why don't we do the Pokemon? Okay, sweet. So wait, what did Bobby say again? <laughs> There he, there he is. We can That's, see you. We can, we can see you now. You're real. You're real. Real. I had the liberty of, of watching your video when you were in pandemic of touring your apartment. I'll yeah. get into that in a minute because you had a lot oh, of nostalgia yeah. stuff for me. So like I, my, my nostalgia brain was kind of going this way. So but, I watched that video <laughs> at least four times. I'm a, a freaking creep or something, dude. I only watched it once. <laughs> I watched it maybe twice because you had that. <laughs> no, no, listen. No, no. I only watched it once. I watched it maybe twice. I watched it maybe twice, and the reason why was because you had that Land Rover One Life magazine. Was, oh, yeah. that, was that old Forester right there? Was that what that was? Was that an old Forester whiskey? It was a uh, Lagavulin. Like okay, 16 year? No, it's a different one. It's um, okay, 15 years experience. It doesn't drink alcohol. Oh. <laughs> I actually don't drink, but I, but it's not a religious thing or like a AA thing. It's just, 
yeah. he doesn't yeah. like alcohol. But anyway, yeah, you had that. I watched it the second time because you had that Land Rover magazine where you did the comic in it, the yeah. the, the One Life. And so I started trying to find it because I'm a nostalgia guy. So very hard to find. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very hard to find. I'm like trying to find this one. The only one, I think it was only released in the UK. All right. So we're going to do some card opening, but we're going to let you decide what we would, what we can open. Pokemon, uh, hockey, NBA, yeah. baseball. It's really up to you what so you would we, like. We actually had a little bet here to see which one you want to open. Hockey box here. Uh-huh. It's been quite popular and people are scalping. There's a soccer prism. We can open this. Baseball guy. We can open this. Uh-huh. And the latest um, NBA prism. This yeah. was about $150. I wow. got it for, um, retail about $20. Or oh, yeah. we can just open Vivid Voltage. Vivid Voltage Pokemon. Um, I'm kind of stuck between hockey and Pokemon. Yes! I, I knew can- it! Yes! You both are right because he said he was stuck between the two. So before you reveal who said what, let's just have him pick. <laughs> are you a hockey fan? Uh, if I have to watch a sport, I would choose hockey. Yeah. I knew it. I knew he likes it. The he likes the fighting. Yeah. Love it. Sports cards are going through the roof as far as collectability. A- a- every card is going ridiculously yeah. crazy right now. Every. I mean, how long until this bubble pops though? At least a year. People who want to flip and the people who want to just rip, they're fighting. Move on to the, to, to the Pokemon. Yeah. So one of the things that we do, Sean, we like to guess the energy. Do you, do you know any of the energy? <laughs> no, is it like a scale from one to yeah. ten? There's fire, there's a grass, there's water, there's metal, there's a few, there's lightning. Grass is energy? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, Anthony would like to call it a uh, leaf. Yeah. And- well, it's, it looks like a leaf, so I call it leaf. I started to learn this stuff from these guys here. That's why we started calling Bobby the guru, because like, he started knowing all this stuff. Like, I just know. His reaction yeah. to these cards are ridiculous. What we do is we guess the the, the energy that she's going to show up on the screen. The, the last two cards on the deck is usually the main hit card, so they're the nicer cards of the deck. Bobby generally reacts off of those hit cards. Guess the energy. Too. Fire. Grass. Water. Sidekick. Fighting. That's a fighting, that's called a fighting energy. All right, reverse. All right, so you see, that's a reverse hollowed card. So right, that's like a go. nice Ready? card. And the last card should be something special. Ah. And it's nothing. And it's nothing. <laughs> in voltage, you want the rainbow Pikachu, the fat Pikachu. Rainbow and fat. can you tell us how much that is? Raw between four to $500. But if you obviously get a, a graded card, you know, you can grade cards the way you can grade comics. Yeah. Um, yeah. PS10 can go as high as $1,000. Wow. Now CGC is starting to get into the cards aspect of things. And they're starting to go into the PSA's territory. Their grading is harsher to cards than PSA. Is that who's doing? They're, they're grading video game cartridges too. Oh. I don't know if it's CGC. I think AFA... Oh. Yeah, AFA does uh, like action figures, and I think the same company does uh, video games. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw one for, I think it was the original Super Mario. The guy had the original case. It was untouched, and it was like thousands of dollars. There's something about it that's like a holy grail item. It's not just uh, Mario number one. It's like a specific one to the New York region in 1985 or something like that. I've got I've got a question, though. So Amazing Fantasy 15? That's a very serious book, man. My question is, who has it? <laughs> exactly. Nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just like one left. No, no, no. Like, there's there's many. You're into sculpting now? And I have a specific idea in mind. I'll just make it out of cardboard. Video. Yeah, I was making a tank today for uh, Batman Volume 3. Uh, I made this uh, for flaw holes. Yeah. It's like, you get better lighting here. And the, and the top comes off, right? To see the inside? Yeah, it's like, man, that's intricate. Yeah, oh, I yeah. made it. Yeah, so look at that. That's, that is so cool. That is easier cool. to move around in space. Uh, and I offered this as a tier. So when you <laughs> did the Indiegogo, one tier was you could buy this for 500 bucks and somebody bought it. So I got to ship it out pretty soon. But for my next Batman book, I'm designing uh, two different new Batmobiles. I could just draw it, but I've got extra time and I just enjoy making something 3D just to have it so I can move around in space. So, you know, when I'm drawing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end of the day, I know I can sell that shit when I'm done. So it's, I don't see it as like a waste of time or anything well, like that. A serious reference, though. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So, Sandy, you want to do one? Let's do one more. Let's do one right, more. Let's do one more. Sean, what's your what's your energy? Uh, I'll go grass. Fire. Fire. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh. oh. This, this is a Charmander. Everybody knows Charmander. So there's got to be something nice at the end of this, right? Oh. And there is. Oh. And there is. I was also gonna break something with, with Sean, but um, yeah. Oh, oh wow. my god. Oh my god. There's a story to this, Sean. I told you. Anthony's a big, if you see in back of him, he's a big uh, Simpsons guy and he collects all yeah. the pop, right? 
I'm going to try, but I'm going to try and get one for myself. The gamer one? Just so that I can say I have one and Anthony doesn't. If you got it in GameStop, I'm going to start cursing. But if you didn't get it in GameStop, then it's fine. Did you get it in GameStop? I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to send that to Anthony now? No, no. she's going to keep it and put it in my face. I always happen to find it retail price. <laughs> you got it retail? Tell me you got it retail. <laughs> Dark energy. Metal. Psychic. What do, what do you guys want? Oh. oh. Fire. Fire. Psychic. Oh, oh, Got psychic. it. All right. Remember that. Oh. oh. That's nice. That's nice. Million. Reverse. That's, I've never heard of that. That's kind of expensive. Oh, wait a minute. I see something shiny in the back. See Bobby, you see Bobby's reaction? Oh. That's getting all excited. What is oh, that? you see. <laughs> oh. oh. Rainbow rare. Opal. Hey. Oh. Rainbow rare. Opal. That's a trainer card. Yeah, rainbow rare. The most valuable card you just pulled. Like, what was the most valuable one? Not a Pokemon card, but I'm holding a rookie uh, Lamello ball basketball card. It's going for three and a half thousand dollars. Wow. I got that yeah. card from a twenty dollar box. McDonald's came out with a twenty five year anniversary, and so in the McDonald's, the holographic Pikachu. I pulled that card from a McDonald's Happy Meal. I gave the meal to a homeless guy because I don't eat McDonald's. But when that card was first graded by the first ever person, it went what eighteen thousand. John, th this is not Anthony's passion. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. What's the longest like a time you've illustrated a, a page? Pencils to inks. One page a day, but sometimes I have, you know, really wicked pages, which it's like two days easy. Most I've spent two and a half days. Across this line, spending too much time on it, you're starting to fuss and it starts to hurt the quality. You gotta kind of go fast, keep it fresh. I've heard of pages lasting three, four days. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're like Olivier Coipel or some of these really intense artists, they can take like two pages a week or whatever. Sometimes when you overthink it, about a certain part, you know, you kind of just get over it. Yeah, like sometimes I have a hard time drawing women's faces. Something about drawing like softer features me, like I'm better with like angry chiseled men. Uh, sound weird. Yeah, but drawing like a curvy woman. Is that actually sounded it did sound funny. <laughs> better with angry chiseled men. Yeah. <laughs> it's because you're so good at the straight lines, you know, the fine lines. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Makes the same. Yeah, I that. For the fans out there, right? Like, I always like to play this one game, and, and I don't know if you can think of anything on the spot, but tell us two lies and one truth, and we'll guess which one is the truth. I took fencing lessons in order to learn how to sword fight before I did Batman book. I almost got pulled over from the cops, but I was able to outrun him in my car. One time I was on a cruise and I fell off the boat. Ooh, that was really good. I I'm going to go with the fencing one. I'm going to say that's the truth. Going on the cruise, I think he fell over. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be logical about this. Like outrun a cop, it's a little bit hard, I think. You gotta yeah, be... but he, he likes to but drive. But he has he cars. Knows. He's he got like some nice drive. cars. Fencing, very, very feasible. But falling off the boat is- I'm sure this idiot can get drunk and fall over things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so which one is the truth? Boom, I knew it. The fencing, ah! baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's because of that in the background that I- that Oh, I, you scored? Yeah, and I've seen the sword when I was stalking him in that video. Oh, God. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I'm not very good. I just learned enough <clears throat> to know like <clears throat> how to move, little things like that. Like I wanted the uh, sword fights in the book to be realistic and not just like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that segues onto, now that you showcase that sword, home that you have right there. The number one thing that I, I obviously see in the background there, and I, I've heard you mention a couple of times, is Blade Runner. Um, yeah. 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 So is this like your favorite movie of all time, Blade Runner? Or is this or is this one of your top five? Oh, uh, no, you know, I love visually. It's such a beautiful movie and low budget. <laughs> the lead actor and the producer and the director can't agree whether yeah. or not the main character was a robot or not. That being said, like it still is like a cult hit for a reason. Like this is something about it, you know. But a friend of mine that watches our program, he's a huge Blade Runner fan. So he'll love that little yeah. <laughs> reference. <laughs> uh, nerd. Uh, yeah, nerd. What is your number one film of all time? Or do you have one? Yeah, I would go uh Shawshank Redemption okay I love that movie oh my god that is my favorite movie okay I am convinced Sean and I are either the same person or we're <laughs> just <good> friends <laughs> so this is the exact compass that uh Andy Dufresne bought at the end of the movie no way uh, Andy Dufresne bought at the end of the movie 
No way. Uh, this, isn't the, this isn't the one used in the film, but this is the exact model that he bought. And uh, you could get, these were like World War II or whatever. I think this one's broken. I have it here. No one ever recognizes what this is, but if you watch the movie, it's, this is what he's holding. He find that spot. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's funny. In the movie, they're like, um, some in the main, he has to go to a town called Buxton, which is like way up north. And uh, the truth is, Buxton is not north, it's south. That being said, there's no way you would be able to find a tree in a field and he was searching <laughs> all week long, you know? When it's your number one film, you gotta have that, you know, you gotta have a replica of your-, of your It's of not your. a replica, Anthony, it's a real thing, okay? He <laughs> said it's not the original. It came straight- from... Look at that, look Look what he's showing right there. Just look, t- pay attention for a yeah, second. It's a, uh, remember the Star Wars arcade game from the yes, early 80s? So this guy yeah. makes these boxes and like, it's hard to see on the camera right now, but this is something about this. Like, like, I love having this here. I think his name's artivision.com or whatever, but he makes like nostalgic boxes, like old school cabinet art. Yes. What Does he, he do other some... games? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, all, like <laughs> Tapper, like uh, he some concept art for uh, a Batman book coming up. <laughs> Concept art for uh, a Batman book coming up. I got, I don't know what you can see, but I got like Blade Runner cards there, a, a Stormtrooper, yeah, Spinner. And I have two places to draw. This is for a guest in this upstairs loft area where I do my writing, <laughs> manga show. I have a, a secret speakeasy here. Nice. Oh, you don't drink, so you don't you don't care about that. No, it's still awesome. It's still awesome. It's a hidden, it's a hidden. <laughs> you know nothing of this. Yeah. You know nothing of yeah. this. And I know you have some video games also, like uh, like Nintendo games and stuff I like do, that. Man. Oh my god. Oh man. Like, oh, I don't know oh, if you I don't I don't know if you can see your phone. This this head came out pretty awesome. Uh you know, this is based off of the original game and watch. That's the original right there. I know, but this is the re-release of the no, that's cool, man. I like this coming out. I got the original Game Boy. I think it still works. These flat files brought in the library so these are antique do you still play uh, do gotta, you still play some of these games oh yeah yeah for uh, sure what's your favorite uh, of the nintendo games there i don't know i think poncho is pretty hard to beat right oh wow wow so then i got uh more models and stuff I got a uh, cell animation of Harley Quinn from the cartoon. That's all that out of a display. John, what's but, yeah. your like most prized collectible piece? Artwork by this guy named Jorge Zafino. So I have a, up my stairs, we have like a gallery, whatever art that I've collected. You guys won't know who this guy is, but like, I really love this guy's stuff. He died in 2003 or four, but uh, getting one of his pages is almost impossible. And I'm lucky enough to have this one in the uh, Conan taste that he did. Oh, wow. Look at that. I love the Rocketeer. Trying to not have a lot of nerdy stuff around. Like I'm getting this, this nostalgia feel sean like you know when you watch tim burton's uh bat are you a returns guy or you're an original guy 89 the first one <laughs> the original. Original. No, look, I yeah. honestly, I, I love, you know, 89 is 89, but really appreciate Returns. I mean, I'm a yeah, no, man. It's like one of the best Christmas movies. Along with uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Bars upstairs. I wanted uh, to put a fire pole in so if I could drive oh, into my driveway, take the fire pole down into my gym and start doing pull-ups <laughs> like a champ, you know? I mean, we really appreciate it. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted a driveway garage where you could like Ferris to Bueller, like pull in, you can see right through to the tree yeah, and snow and all that. Just don't crash through the glass. That's <laughs> yeah, no, I try not to do that. That's another great movie. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. When I was in Brooklyn, I was literally working in a coat closet. I was doing pretty way well in comics, but you wouldn't know it by the way I lived. So when we got out to Maine, I finally got to like stretch out a little bit. Now I finally have like the studio that I always wanted, you know? Your time is precious and we really, really appreciate it. You know, hopefully now you're part of the Backspace Nerds fan as a, as a car nerd. So we'll introduce you as the car nerd. You know, hopefully in the future we can get you on again. And it's a true pleasure to, to have you on and to discuss these things. That yeah, well, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I appreciate it. And, uh, good luck with your show. Oh. Thank you so much. I'm expecting signatures on this, okay? You got it, absolutely. <laughs> We're looking forward to conventions coming back and, and can't wait to see you again. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, Sean Gordon Murphy uh, on Instagram, known for sort of doing Batman White Knight the last five years and Punk Rock Jesus for, for Bobby. Uh, I just did a campaign for uh, my next book called The Plot Holes, which I'm finishing up. And right now I'm working on another Batman book. Awesome I, uh, stuff. I have a, a, a sword. And he has a sword <laughs> and he's a fencer. Just learned, but he's a fencer. So thank you so much, Sean, for being on the show. We are Backspace Nerds and uh, we will see you in the future. Nerds Thanks so much, out. guys. Take care. The Zach. The Zach.